Hey, third grade. It's Mrs. Enos. I hope you're doing well and you're having a good Monday. It's been an interesting day around here. I had to go to the doctor and get my blood drawn. There's nothing wrong with me, but it's just like one thing I have to do every year. And today, my guinea pig, Callie, is going to the doctor too. So it's like a whole day of us going to the doctor. But I wanted to take some time and read chapter seven. Hamster Saurus Rex to you and prepare yourself because it's a long one. Okay? Chapter 7. Dylan squinted at me from across the back seat of the car. On some days, my mom works late and Dylan's dad gives me a ride home. I tried to act normal, but Dylan knew something was up. Sam, I'm really sorry for being such a blabbermouth before, she said. No problem, I said. I already forgot about it. I smiled and gripped my lunchbox tightly. And you're sure there's nothing, like, weird going on? Nope, nothing. Hey, beautiful weather we're having. I pointed out the window. It was still raining outside. Every once in a while, my lunchbox shook wildly. I know what's in there. And I had to lean hard on it to keep it still. Oh, stop grilling him, Dylan, said her dad from the front seat. Whatever it is, maybe he just doesn't want to talk about it, like how his mom calls him bunny butt. Dude, you told your dad about that, I whispered. Yeah, sorry, said Dylan. The truth was I couldn't tell Dylan that Hamster Source Rex was currently rattling around inside my lunchbox. I felt terrible about it, but I was worried Dylan would spill the beans again. I couldn't risk it. And I couldn't leave Hammy Rex at school either. The little guy was alive, but far from well. Plus, Martha was taking her hamster monitor duties way too seriously. If she found the fugitive and locked him up in the cage in our classroom, Beaver would be able to get his revenge. The way I saw it, I only had one option. Home sweet home, Sam said Mr. D'Amato as he pulled over to the curb. Thanks for the ride, Mr. D. See you later, Dylan. I hopped out of the car. Okay, said Dylan. Let me know if you want any help on your science night project. Science what now? I said. Science night, said Dylan. The bi-monthly science fair, sponsored by Smiles Corp. They have a science fair every two weeks. Crazy. Coming up in two weeks, half your science grade depends on it. You have started your project, right? Um, yes, I said unconvincingly. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. It's going to revolutionize the field of science. Cool, said Dylan, looking concerned. Bye, I said. Once inside, I ran upstairs, past Raisin, my mom's 23-year-old hairless cat who sleeps approximately 24 hours a day. And into my bedroom, I closed the door behind me, took a deep breath, and opened the lunchbox. I gasped. Hamstersaurus Rex looked different. His stumpy little arms were even stumpier than before. His lips were curled back to reveal teeth, no longer square, but sharp little fangs. Most disturbing of all, he'd grown a little lizardy tail that swayed from side to side behind him. There's a picture. Want to see? Oh, there it is. A little tail, it's got fangs, bony plates, razor sharp claws. <sighs> Hamster Saurus Rex had just been a silly name before, but now he really did look like he was part dinosaur. Had consuming the bizarre mixture of Dino Blast, Power Packer, and other vitamins mutated him somehow? What was Smiles Corp putting in that stuff? The supplements didn't seem to be having the same effect on Coach Weeks, but then again, he was pretty weird in other ways. Hamstersaurus Rex blinked at me. I said, uh, I said, are you okay? In answer, he loud out a thunderous Jurassic roar. 
I jumped five feet backward and may or may not have temporarily lost bladder control. Hehehe, <laughs> I said, my voice trembling. Nice, Hamstersaurus. Good, Hamstersaurus. It suddenly occurred to me that after his change, he might not be so friendly anymore. Hamstersaurus hopped out of the lunchbox and stomped toward me. He seemed to prefer walking on his back legs now. He gave a snarl. I went lip and fell to the ground as if I were dead. I'd read somewhere that you were supposed to do this in case of a bear attack. I figured a mutant hamster dinosaur hybrid attack was kind of like a bear attack because they both have uh, feet. I opened one eye and saw Hamstersaurus Rex spread his jaws wide. He chomped down on my finger. I squealed, but it didn't hurt much. The little guy was definitely gnawing on me, but in a friendly way. You only sort of want to eat me, huh? I said. He whined and wagged his tail and chewed a little harder on my knuckle. Now it did hurt. Ow, I said, yanking my hand away. Guess you must be hungry. Let me find you something to eat. Stay here. What do you think he's going to get him to eat? Most hamsters eat like hay and pellets and vegetables, right? I closed the door behind me and went downstairs to the kitchen. I took a head of lettuce from the vegetable crisper and returned to my room. Bon appetit, I said, holding out a leaf toward Hamstersaurus Rex. Leafy greens, full of fiber, hamsterlicious, but also hamstertricious, better than human fingers. Hamstersaurus Rex nibbled a little. Then in three bites, he ate the whole leaf. Wow, you're starving. Mutating into a dinosaur probably burns a ton of calories. I held out another leaf, but Hammy Rex wasn't there. I turned around to see the little guy standing behind me on the bed. He'd already wolfed down the rest of the lettuce head. Dude, I said, you're straight up salad slayer. He looked up at me and growled plaintively. This time, the sound wasn't coming from his mouth. It was coming from his belly. What? You're still hungry? I said. You just ate twice your weight in romaine. He hopped off the bed and stopped toward the bedroom door and started scratching at it. No, sorry. You have to stay in here, I said. I can't have you shedding all over the house. My mom is extremely allergic to anything with fur. That's why our cat looks like grandpa. And speaking of raisin, hamsters and cats are natural enemies. For your own safety, I need to keep you two separated. Sit tight and I'll see if we have any more hamster snacks. I ran downstairs and came back with a bag of green apples. One by one, Hamster Source Rex gobbled them down, core and all. He was still hungry. Look, we don't have any more food, I said when he was done. Why don't you play with this yo-yo instead? I held out a yo-yo. Hamster Source Rex looked at it. He looked at me, then he looked at the yo-yo. It hit the wall and broke into two pieces. Guess you're more of a slinky guy, I said. Hmm. Hamstersaurus Rex sniffed the air and looked longingly at the door. He wanted out. Nope, I'm not going to resuscitate you just so you can get eaten by my geriatric family cat, I said. Hamstersaurus Rex didn't listen. He backed up, pawed the ground a couple of times like a bull, and charged the door. There's a picture. Want to see? There he is. The cat. Wait, stop! You'll hurt your kablam! The little guy smashed his head into my bedroom door hard, blasting it wide open. He didn't just have a dinosaur tail and a dinosaur face, he had dinosaur strength too. Dude, I think you broke the door, I said, gaping at the hand-sized splinter that had been knocked out of the frame. 
But Hamstersaurus Rex had frozen in his tracks. In the hallway, I saw a pair of gleaming green eyes. It was Raisin. Her eyes were green? Weird. I never actually seen them open. My mom and I mostly know that Raisin is still alive because she sleeps in different locations around the house. Okay, I said. Everyone remain calm. Raisin hissed. I think we can find a diplomatic solution to the current raisin pounced. Hamstersaurus Rex reared back and unleashed another ear-splitting roar. Somehow, raisin changed direction in midair. With a strangled yowl, she tore off down the hallway like a terrified, flesh-colored lightning bolt. I heard something break on the other side of the house. Stay right there until I get back, I said to Hamstersaurus Rex. He hopped up and down and wagged his dino tail like he thought it was a game. I found Raisin wedged inside the filing cabinet in my mom's office. There were files all over the floor. She'd somehow managed to break the stapler, too. Sorry, girl, I said, trying to soothe and dislodge her at the same time. After a few minutes of tugging, I was finally able to get her unstuck. Raisin gets kind of gummy on warmer days. The old cat seemed to be medically unhurt, but psychologically scarred. She immediately went to sleep. I ran back to my bedroom, but there was no sign of hamster sores rex. Uh-oh. There's a picture. I found him downstairs in the kitchen. He knocked open the cupboard to get at my mom's forbidden strategic reserve of hidden junk food. Funchos flavor wedges, sugar noshers, spicy cheese wallets, mint car caramel cocoa knobs, and many more nutritionally empty goodies. Hamster source had torn into the packages like some brutal nature show predator and was feasting upon processed inyards of his prey. Dude, I said, how am I going to deal with this mess before my mom gets? I heard the sound of her car in the driveway. I sighed. If I checked the mail, I had about a minute and a half. In a flash, I cleaned up everything as best I could and skidded to a halt in the foyer just as my mom's key scraped in the lock. My mom opened the door, holding some envelopes. Hi, bunny butt. I'm home. <sighs> I wheezed, sweat dripping from my forehead onto the floor. Wow, you're just standing here in the dark, panting? Huh, said my mom. I nodded. It's not creepy at all, she said as she flicked on the light and headed towards the kitchen. I still hadn't caught my breath. My mind raced. Had I remembered everything? Sugar noshers, packaging, check. Shredded cheese, wallet bag, check. Coco knob, wrappers, check. Yep, that was all of it. Except wait, wasn't there something else? Hamstersaurus Rex. Not check. Not check at all. The little guy was still at large. I made it to the kitchen just as my mom turned on the light. The hamster source Rex was nowhere to be seen. I'd already started trying to talk my way out of the situation before I realized there wasn't one. See, mom, the thing is, I said, trailing off. Yes, she said, looking skeptical. The thing is, um, I really like your scarf. Would you call that color mop? No, nah, that's not a color, Sam, but thank you, she said, cocking her head and squinting. You know, something looks different round in here. She sniffed the air and ran her finger along the counter. I shrugged, then shrugged again. Sam, be honest, she said, did you clean up the house? Guilty as charged, I said, smiling a little too hard. She smiled back at me. Well, aren't you a good little, ah, 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 shoo! My mom sneezed. Again, this is debatably the loudest sound known to science. 
She wiped her nose, which was now bright red and running. Oh, Sam, tell me you didn't bring some kind of furry animal into that. Achoo! She sneezed again. No way, Mom. Of course not. I know how allergic you are. I said, feeling particularly guilty as I handed her a tissue. There might be a little dust in the air. I dusted. You did? Well, aren't you? Achoo! When I made it back to my room, Hamstersaurus Rex was sitting on the floor. He'd strewn the contents of my backpack all over the room. Hey, come on. There's no food in there, I said, closing the door behind me. But he wasn't looking for food. He was standing on my open sketchbook, staring at a picture that I'd drawn. Picture of him? Yep, I said. That's you. He squinted at the picture, then back at me. He wagged his dino tail. He looked confused. Well, you're a little different now, I said. I grabbed a pencil and added fangs and a tail and used the eraser to redraw his arms stumpier. There. He looked at the new picture and burped. I took it to mean he was satisfied. Somewhere in the house, Mom sneezed. Look, I said, plopping down on the floor beside him. I'm not sure you can stay here after all. Hamstersaurus whined and stared up at me, looking cute and innocent. Well, as cute and innocent as a fanged hamster can look. My mom sneezed again. A framed poster of a spaceship fell off the wall. I wish you could live with me, but I don't think it's going to work. I guess I'm taking you back to school tomorrow, but you have to rein it in, though. Keep it low profile. Otherwise, you're going to be in real danger. No more rampaging, okay? I drew a quick sketch of Hamstrowers Wreck rampaging and a, then a big X over it. See, no rampaging. Stay calm like this. He drew a picture. Beside the first picture, I drew another picture of Hamster Shores Rex calmly meditating and a big thumbs up and a bunch of stars next to it. Hamster Shores Rex looked at the two pictures for a minute. He blinked. Then he burped again. I hope we had an understanding. Hey, tomorrow we're going to have chapter eight, which is a short one. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Try to keep warm. It's pretty chilly outside still. Can't wait till that weather gets warmer. Anyways, miss you all. Take care. Bye.